Hello, physicist. Uh, today we're going to talk about the PhotoGate. It's a really excellent device. We're going to use it quite a bit during this first semester. And uh, we could make our measurements from this device. Um, you know, it would be fine. But I feel like it's really important to talk about how the device makes its measurements. Because one thing that I really don't want to see in any of my physics classes is I don't want to see making measurements with magic boxes. And we don't have any idea how the device actually makes its measurement. You know, we need to always think about what was the quality of the measurement? What if there was something faulty about the machine? How would I know that the machine was doing something faulty if I didn't understand anything about how the machine worked? And while the machine is pretty complicated, and this was actually $70 for this little guy, um, it's not that complicated to understand the basic principles about how it works. So let me show you some of the parts. There's not too many things to see. Besides the screen that allows you to start and stop it, and then the other one is going to allow you to change some of the other settings. There's two time settings, and then there's also a speed setting, and we will be using it almost exclusively for the speed. So all these photo gates are set up all the time for their speed setting, but the way the gate works is happening on the inside here. I know that's a little tough for you to see, so I'm gonna turn my flashlight on my phone and try and help you to see the actual gates. So I'm gonna try and shine that in there. Now hopefully you can see inside there, there's two kind of circular areas up against the side of the wall. Those are actually little light bulbs. But instead of producing regular light, they produce infrared light. So that's not a form of light our eyes could see, but it is something that they can shine across to the other side of the gate, which I'm going to flip over now and let you see. That's just a little flat spot that's been made to be very reflective, especially to infrared light. So there are actually two gates, one on either side of it, and of course the machine knows very, very accurately what is the distance between those two gates. So I'm gonna to go to the board to show you how the, how the device actually turns this into a speed. So I have the device drawn behind me. Again, up here is the dial where we read, and then there's two buttons that we can use to start and stop the, the device. Now the two gates are down here. They shine a light across to the other side, kind of like a starting and a stopping line. And essentially the way that it works is that once the light reaches the other side, it bounces back. And then it's received by the sensor, which is right there where the light is, where the infrared light is. It does that on both sides. So essentially it's set up a little beam of light that goes across and bounces directly back. Your garage door opener probably has a very similar device it's down there at the bottom. It shoots an infrared light across. Something goes through and breaks it. This guy starts a timer. If either of the two gates becomes broken, the light is broken, then it turns on the stopwatch on the inside and it waits to see when the next one's going to be turned off. When the second one goes off, it shuts off the timer and then it uses that time to calculate the, the speed of the object. Now, one dilemma that we have is where is that the speed? Is that the speed that it entered the gate with? Is that the speed that it left the gate with? Or is it the speed somewhere in between? Uh, if the object travels at a constant speed, no worries, because that's the speed everywhere. But if it speeds up, which is what we're going to look at, um, then we need to really think about where is this guy giving me the measurement of the speed? So essentially what it's done is to use the average speed equation, V equals D over T, to calculate the instantaneous speed and so long as you feel very confident that the acceleration was uniform, that is to say that the acceleration did not change, then essentially the speed that you're getting is the speed at the exact midpoint of the device, or exactly between the two gates that are over here on this side. So one gate here and one gate over here, it's giving you the speed at the midpoint. Now that's great and all, that shows you what the speed is, and let me show you how that guy works. So this guy is set up right now, I'm gonna slide my finger through there, and it tells me what the speed of my, of my finger was as it passed through. Now a much more interesting thing that we can do is to take two of them and tape them together like this. And the reason why we can do that is because now I could get two speeds. As an object enters the gate, I can get the initial speed, and on the other side, I can get the final speed. And all I would need to know in order to calculate the acceleration is either the time, which these devices are not going to tell me what time this one off went compared to this one, but what I could do is use the distance. And that's not the normal equation for acceleration, that's not the definition of acceleration, the definition of acceleration is the change in velocity, which I can get from this device, divided by the change in time. But there's an alternate equation, and let me show you that equation, because we're going to use these photo gates um, in upcoming labs over and over again in order to be able to get the accelerations. It's going to be really important that you understand how can you get the acceleration from the two photo gates and the distance between them. So I'm going to measure from the middle of one photo gate to the middle of the other photo gate. Okay? So that means that I would have three pieces of information. 
So first of all, I'll have the initial and final velocity. And because I can measure the distance between where each of the measurements was made, so this measurement was made at the middle of this photo gate, and the other one was made at the middle of this one, and my measuring the distance between the middle to the middle, then I can find what the distance is And that just leaves the acceleration to solve for. So let me move this over just a little bit this way. And let me show you the equation. And I'm going to work you through the algebra to kind of help you out um, in this case. So the equation we would use is v squared equals v naught squared plus 2ad. And what I want to do is to solve that for the acceleration. Now, that's an exercise you guys can do. You know, for sure you should practice that. That's a good skill to have. But I'm going to go ahead and get you to the answer right now. Okay, this equation is not the definition of acceleration, but I can certainly calculate it with that information. Because all the equations are connected together, we can use this equation to calculate the acceleration of an object as long as we have two velocities, and we have the distance between them. And that's exactly what the photo gate's going to give us. So we've measured these photo gates many, many, many times. They're about 5.9 centimeters from the middle of one gate to the middle of the second gate. And so we're going to use 0.059 meters. And then we're going to make our measurements for the photo gates. Those measurements will be in, mid, in meters per second, and that is down here at the, at the bottom. You always want to check to make sure that it says meters per second, or we sometimes use centimeters per second. Now, when you click Start on both of them, you'll see the units start blinking. The units blinking indicates that they are ready to start making their measurements, and if I pass my hand through there, then we'll see that these guys were able to pick up my speed as my finger went through. So that's essentially how the PhotoGate lab is going to work. And then in the future, as we make uh, future measurements of acceleration, which we'll do several times, these PhotoGates are a great, compact way. We can easily put this thing together, and we can understand how the device works in order to make our measurements and see how the acceleration changes depending on different circumstances. 